brother, oh brother. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's get after it. Let's get after it on this beautiful Monday, April the 8th, aka the start of a new week, aka solar eclipse day, aka if the sun's going to black out today, so am I. I hope you're having a good one. I hope you were able to get some rest and relaxation over the weekend. I hope you were able to crush way too many beautiful cinnamon butter buns at your local Texas Roadhouse. Um, I guess maybe if you're watching basketball, uh, I feel bad for you if you were a fan of Iowa. Ended up losing. That's a bit sad, uh, but Caitlin Clark seems to be very transformative in many, many different measures. Um Shout out to Verstappen for winning the Japanese F1 Grand Prix. Uh, I think the men's March Madness is tonight. Uh, this week, we're also going to get a little bit more into golf. Obviously, the Masters this weekend. So uh, we have a lot going down. We have a lot, a lot, a lot going down. And on top of that, the markets are moving. They're looking pretty good. They're looking pretty green. They're looking pretty froggy. Things are being led up by crypto. We have Bitcoin recapturing 72000 this far away from hitting a new all-time high in real time right now i'm looking at the charts we have the spy the cues picking up we have a lot going on we have a lot a lot a lot going on wrestlemania was epic i saw some i show speed clips of that so there's a lot a lot of sporting events a lot of market events a lot of life events we just have a lot a lot a lot going down so i hope you're having a good one i hope you're ready for hopefully a good show, but more importantly, I hope you're ready to make some money today. So hopefully you can make some good trades, uh, but let's get after it. Now I'll give you more details in a second, but obviously shout out to public, public.com slash Matt course for being today's sponsor. It is by far my favorite place to trade options. It is free to download, free to sign up, no commission fees, no per, no per contract fees. It is by definition, the most cost-effective way to trade options. So if you are trading options or are interested in trading options, you might as well download public, check it out, see if it's for you. I absolutely love it. Pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video, but I'll give you the whole spiel on them a little bit later. Let's get into it because there is quite a bit for me to go over this morning to get everyone ready for the week ahead. Stock futures are a little changed to start the new week. Well, I think they should fire this in turn and hire a new one uh, because things are okay. They did update. Stock futures inch higher as Wall Street tries to rebound from last week's pullback. So, right now in pre market, we're looking decent. The spy is picking up, the Qs are picking up. Like I said, Bitcoin's looking strong. Obviously, related plays like Coin, Mara, Riot looking good. We have a lot to get into, but let's do the bigger picture before we get to the smaller picture. Klaus Schwab. In the new world, we must accept total transparency. You have to behave. It will be in integrated into your personality. But if you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't be afraid. Well, that's some scary villain-esque stuff if I've ever heard it. Dans ce nouveau monde, mm. il, in this new world, we must accept transparency. Transparence, et je dirais même une transparence and I'll total. even say total Tout transparency. transparency. You have to get used to it. You have to behave accordingly. It becomes, how should I put it, integrated into your personality. But if you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't be afraid. Makes you feel good, right? Makes you makes you feel super comfortable about how how things are going. I mean, it, it's almost a caricature at this point, really, for Klaus Schwab. I mean, it. If there were a real world villain, like a, a dis, despicable me-esque villain, it would be him. What he says, how he says it, his accent, his name, dude, across the board, he is the villain character of the day. Biden will announce new student loan forgiveness plan impacting tens of millions of Americans. So I want to do some of the bigger picture, political stuff, economic stuff, then we'll get into more of the nuanced stock market moves for today um but as you can see biden one tactic to potentially become reelected as president is to buy votes you could buy votes by forgiving student debt you could do some stuff with immigrants giving away money basically if you give away a bunch of taxpayer money or if you give away money that you're printing out of thin air good solid way to buy more votes President Joe Biden will announce today, Monday, the details of his revised student loan forgiveness plan. Although Biden's plan B will be narrower than his original effort, tens of millions of borrowers stand to benefit. Um, so, hey, 
if this somehow benefits you in one way or another, have at it. It's almost silly to not take advantage of it if it's going to be given to you. But in the similar vein of thought, new California bill will make illegal immigrants eligible for first time home buyer loans and will help with down payment. This is reality, folks. California that would allow illegals to own a home. They basically would help you with the down payment. I want the viewers to know they give 20% down. Then when you sell it, you owe that money back. It's AB 1840. A lot of people are saying this is a slap in the <clears throat> face. Is this something that's going to pass in the state of California? I mean, owning yeah, a home in, Cal in America is, is living the American dream. There are so many <laughs> families who can't afford a down payment because they're in that tax bracket, which won't allow them to even get that 20% down. Yeah, it's going to pass. And I think a lot of it has to do with perpetuating this narrative that that uh, Republicans are mean and cruel because they're going to spin it and say, you don't want these poor people to have a home. You want them to be on the street. You don't care about them. But not ignoring the real issue of there's people that have been in this country for generations that have paid taxes and built generational wealth and contributed to right. all the things that make America great. And you're ignoring them, you're bypassing them and giving their rightful place to somebody who's from a different country. California that would allow illegals to most likely will pass. It's not going to directly impact me because I'm not in California. But if you're watching and you're from California, your state's a little bit upside down there, team. But it's not just there. It's our government as a whole. And it's not just a left thing. It's not just a right thing. It is a political class thing. They're all crazy and they all just want more money and more power. And that's what they're going to do. Um, this is a like. So uh, you've probably heard the term uh, pork barrel before, where it's just things when we have these big grand bills that get signed into law, there's a lot of subsections of where basically all these individual congressmen, congresswomen get in a little thing that they need, allegedly either for their constituents, that's what they say, but it's more so for their lobbyists. Uh, this is a video breakdown of how some of the recent ones, what money's actually being spent on. So it's kind of weird because here in the U.S., we know a lot of people, especially like, let's just say there's disabled people, there's homeless people, there's vets who need help. We have a lot of people here in the U.S. that clearly, I mean, I'm in New York, so I see it every single day. It is not difficult to go out and walk around and be like, oh, okay, like, are we spending our money on the best things? And obviously your knee-jerk reaction is going to be like, no, obviously our government does not spend the money on the best things it should be spending money on. We all know that. But just to give you actual context on where our tax dollars are going as we're still battling inflation, here's a great video breakdown of it. Um, I would recommend you laugh because if you don't, you're gonna, it's just going to settle in and you're probably going to make you angry. So your options are either laugh at it or become very, very angry. In either case, this is our reality. Whether or not if you gave gin to a sunfish versus tequila, which would make the sunfish more aggressive? That's right. We spent $100,000 to find out if a sunfish would be more aggressive on tequila or on gin. $100,000. Do you know how much food that it could have bought for people who are like actually dying of hunger? Do you know how much medicine, basic medicine that could have bought? $100,000 to study if sunfish were more aggressive on tequila or, or gin. $100,000. And I wish it ended there, but it doesn't. Nearly a million dollars spent studying whether or not Japanese quail, if you give them cocaine, whether or not they're more sexually promiscuous. They was are. Was it one small step for man or was it one small step for a man? And in the end, $750,000 later, they couldn't That's decide. That's just when we went to the moon. Was it one and it was, step for man, one step for a man. He even said he misspoke. $2 million for the construction of a kelp and shellfish nursery in Maine. $1.5 million to encourage video gaming in New York. We might be I wonder how much money they spent on these to graphics. Kids from make, playing video games. $388,000 for Columbia University. Be giving a rich university that has $13 billion any money. $249,000 for the Baltimore Symphony. Give money to all the symphonies and we'd make them part of government. Yep, that's where our taxpayer dollars go to know if birds on cocaine are more promiscuous or not. Love it. Absolutely love it. And you're not the only one who's getting mad. And this happens not even just with Joe Biden, but generally when you're in office, eventually your disapproval rating starts to go up. So right now, 
not technically at an all-time high, but Biden is getting there. His disapproval rating is at 55%. If the, according to the most recent polling, if the election were today, Trump would win. Now, obviously, there's quite a bit of time between now and the actual election, and some people are suggesting that Biden won't even actually make it to the actual election in November. Uh, actually, most recently, Joe Rogan was commenting on that. But his disapproval rating, not an all-time high, getting there, it, it's just even, and the major thing is in most of the swing states, Trump is either ahead or they're just tied. I don't think at this moment in time, Biden is ahead in any swing state. But anyway, back to what I was just alluding to, of will he even make it? This is Rogan's most recent commentary. May. I think he's got until May. No way. I feel like right around May, they're going to pull him. No way. Yeah. way yeah and newsom comes in i think he just has health problems and then the country understands and uh newsom is gonna have his support fully and uh Kam kamala is gonna like i don't want to be president i'm cool with being vice president so yeah. newsom runs with kamala yeah yeah i think so Holy i don't think they can pull shit. kamala i think as long as they keep her quiet she's not she's already the she's whatever liability she quiet, is bro she's already she's so quiet it's may i think he's got until may uh, before we go on, obviously, this is just an opinion, not really particularly backed by fact. He's just saying, hey, I think he has some. Hey, I wanted to get your thoughts on that before we go on. What do you think the odds are of that the actual election will be Biden versus Trump? What do you think the chances that it'll be those two? Um, do you think it's like, I mean, they, well, they're both old to be fair, but Biden some of his recent stuff like how much more medicine can his system really take on this one uh do you think it's 10 percent shot that it's going to be those two 99 100 all right so you guys are a little bit more comfortable on the concept of biden actually surviving uh all right we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see trump biden is like his actual age all right, we'll see. All right, uh, a little bit more related to the economy. Yellen says she won't rule out possible tariffs on China's green exports. So we covered this at the end of last week, but just to give you a recap, there are well, actually two big stories coming out of China. One is Yellen. She was there visiting. We have some commentary for her. Obviously, pretty important what this gremlin character has to say. Now, we're seeing an increase in business investment in a number of new industries targeted by the PRC's industrial policy. How did she get this job? And that job? includes electric vehicles, lithium-ion batteries, and solar. China is now simply too large for the rest of the world to absorb this enormous capacity. Actions taken by the PRC today can shift world prices. And when the global market is flooded by artificially cheap Chinese products, the viability of American and other foreign firms is put into question. Now we're seeing an put increase into in question. question. So that was, I think, just coming out yesterday. But more specifically, Yellen says U.S. plans to quote unquote underscore need for China to shift policy. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said today, Monday, technically when we were sleeping, that future discussions between the U.S. and China will focus on Beijing's need to shift its policy on industry and the economy. She noted U.S. conversations with the Chinese would continue later this month at the International Monetary Fund aka the IMF, and the World Bank Group spring meetings in Washington, D.C. Instead of global trade, Beijing's oversupply concerns tend to focus on the deflationary aspects, detriments to banking sector health and local governments, fiscal stress, uh, principal economists for the China, the economists, intelligent, Yu Su Sen, I don't know, I'm 100% aware I butchered that name, my apologies. Yellen implores China to rethink economic growth strategy. So it's kind of interesting we're at, I don't know, I suppose, some crossroads where tensions, I guess in a different way, tensions have obviously been high. Uh, but Yellen's new router, really, I guess maybe the Biden administration or the U.S. government as a whole, uh, they're kind of taking a new route. And this will be interesting because obviously China being just the world's largest manufacturer, really, for many different important aspects, uh, they're playing a little bit more of hardball, without a doubt. 
Now, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in the southern Chinese city of Guangzhou starting her seven-day visit. Bloomberg's Christopher Condon is traveling with the secretary and joins us now. Chris, uh, who's Yellen met so far? What's been the tone? What's your own observation? So, so far, she held a meeting this morning here in Guangzhou with a group, first, a group of American and other Western, and or, or I should say non-Chinese, business leaders whose companies are active in China. There were uh, executives from companies in Europe, from Japan, and from the U.S. Um, and then she went from that meeting and is right now in a meeting with Wang Weizhong, the governor of the Guangdong province, which, of course, is a very is a huge commercial center in southern China. Um, she's currently speaking with him. She had some remarks at the top. Some of them were very uh, positive about wanting a healthy relationship with China. But once again, she hit very hard on the issue of uh, what the U.S. is saying is industrial overcapacity in China. Overcapacity. Fueled by excessive state subsidies. Um, she's, she's hitting this at every opportunity. And I have to say, one other thing I picked up on is that the U.S. seems very keen to present this as not just a U.S. complaint, but that other countries around the world are also concerned about how overcapacity in China, especially as China's domestic economy has slowed, will begin to distort global markets. So I think that's why you had executives from Japan and Europe in on the first meeting this morning, they're kind of marshalling their criticism together in character. something of a coordinated fashion, I think, and want to present that to the Chinese in that way. So I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, Chris, uh, we know that this is the second visit in several months. Will Yellen accomplish what she set out to do? And just how significant is this Do you think they fly her first class? Trip? Are we paying for that bill? Well... Um, I wouldn't say that you should expect this to be a watershed in any way. We're not going to see major announcements at the end. There aren't going to be what, you know, quote-unquote, deliverables. They're here to make a strong case about this issue. They're here to have talks on on a whole host of other issues that they've already begun talking about in these meetings, going back uh, even before her, meet, her visit here in July. Um, I don't think... You know, at the end of it, we're going to suddenly see some "quote unquote" results. Uh, we're going to have to wait. I think she's not yet to the point where the U.S. is threatening, you know, new trade barriers over this issue of overcapacity. It's not quite coming to a head yet. So it's going to take a little while, and, and then uh, we'll have to see where it goes from there. All right, so that's a more of a thorough breakdown. So there's going to be some updates here and there about it, most likely throughout the week, because she's going to be there for the week. Traders favor two Fed cuts in 2024 as Treasury yields near 4.5%. So the big news of last week went down on Thursday, April the 4th, where we opened up pretty strong. Then it traded down and got the downside gap fill. And then people started to think, okay, are we going to bounce from here roughly at the 521 level? And then no. The market just kept vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. The SPY went from 523 down to 513. It was the worst one-day drop we've seen in excess of a year. And it all has to do to the Fed and the rate cuts and really commentary from Fed member Kashkari, who's on CNBC, and said, hey, if we don't see inflation coming down, we might not cut rates at all. All And then this was backed up by other Fed members such as Mester and Goolsby were really they're echoing in one form or another what the chair of the Fed is saying, Mr. Jerome Powell, where he's like, hey, we're going to wait and we're not cutting until we're definitively sure we took care of inflation. They would rather overdo it on the hawkishness side rather than become dovish too early. So with that news, people are like, oh, OK. Because remember, coming into the year, the market was thinking we might be getting six rate cuts. And then they're like, Four, three, okay, cool, three, and now they're saying two. So they're lowering the amount of rate cuts pretty much every single cycle we go through, every single month where we get the new consumer confidence, inflation, the PPI, the CPI, the PCE, we get retail sales. Every big cycle, the market is finally coming to the realization that, uh-oh, inflation's still here, and double uh-oh, the Fed is actually being very serious about this. All right, so anyway, right now, we're seeing bonds take another hit, yields go up as the odds of rate cuts, the amount of rate cuts this year, seem to be dropping. 
They can't get it wrong again. Economists are increasingly uncertain about Fed rate cuts this year. And really what we're seeing is strong GDP, low unemployment, and a persistent inflation. So there's really no reason for the Fed to actually start cutting rates. So as of right now, the next FOMC meeting is going to be the end of April, start of May, and they are 99% confident we are getting no rate change right here. We're at 5.25, so the chance of us staying at 5.25 is 99%. Now, before a lot of this change, people were starting to say, huh, I bet we get it in June. But over the past week, especially ever since Thursday, the odds of this right here, this would represent uh, one rate cut, uh, are starting to to drop it was around 70 then it dropped to 65 then it dropped to 60 then it dropped to 55 now it's a 50 50 shot of are we actually getting a rate cut in june uh as of now and i'm saying this just because this upcoming week we get some inflation reports but at this point i don't think we're getting a rate cut i really don't obviously that's going to change with the inflation reports coming out this week uh but it's just the can is getting kicked down the road uh the first time that it really spikes for some sort of a rate cut is by the time you get to late july where there is about a 70 percent shot that we have at least one form of a rate cut but anyway uh this week will be pivotal cpi ppi i'll give you all that information in a second the other big news of the day is bitcoin bitty 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 bitcoin is looking real good Look at that explosion to the upside. Daily chart, uh, we are getting an official breakout. I don't know how else to declare this, but this is your official Bitcoin breakout alert. We had lower highs, higher lows. We had this wedge setup. Let me get rid of these lines. They might be a little bit confusing. On the screen right now, uh, you can very evidently see this kind of bull wedge. Uh, we traded up to it, bull flag, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but lower highs, higher lows breaking trend and it has a lot to do with china big breaking news china goes big on bitcoin 284 billy china southern fund has reportedly applied to launch a spot bitcoin etf via hong kong so similar to what we saw in the us in january when they're like hey we want these spot bitcoin etfs trading looks like china is following suit obviously bitcoin as a whole reacting very positively the overall crypto sphere at least according to coin market cap with 2.7 trillion bitcoin itself worth 1.4 trillion trading just below 70 72,000. Crazy, 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 but that's not the only crazy thing going down. Just related to Elon and Tesla and SpaceX and Twitter. Breaking. Brazil Supreme Court opens inquiry into Elon Musk for obstruction of justice involving social media company X. Breaking. The Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Mores, I'm probably butchering it, I don't know Portuguese, has started to process of shutting down access to X in all of Brazil. New, Brazil is moving to regulate X after Elon Musk refused to comply with their anti-free speech demands. Brazil attorney, whoever is lashing out after Musk refused to bend the knee. We cannot live in a society in which billionaires domiciled abroad have control of social networks and put themselves in a position to violate the rule of law, failing to comply with what court orders and threatening our authorities it is urgent to regulate social networks old twitter would have bent the knee um so i guess x but more so specifically elon is kind of in a, a showdown right now with the entire country of brazil which is absolutely nuts so definitely a particular storyline a particular narrative that i think we should pay attention to pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video is how you can get into the discord it's all via maccores.locals.com locals is the membership management and you might be thinking to yourself okay why should i be in the trading discord simple as this it's the best trading discord um so on friday to conclude the week week a nice 700 dollars gain which the first month is completely free after that and then for there's only 500 dollars for the entire year so in one day of trading you would have paid for the entire year uh but you can see right here uh piper around 10 15 in the morning on april 5th was bullish on both the spy and the q's four to five confidence suggested a spy put credit spread a q put credit spread they both hit for a 50 four dollar return per 346 dollars obviously you could scale it up however you want for me personally i traded it on spx it's just advantageous to trade european style contracts versus american that's a completely different side story but anyway i had 20 sold at 55 bought back at 20 which was a nice 70 percent return aka 700 dollars before fees so pretty awesome that's why you should join up so that's the recap from friday of last week now looking forward to this week 
in terms of macroeconomic events, you have a lot going down. So Wednesday, before an hour before the market opens, you get the CPI report, Consumer Price Index. Then on Thursday, you get the PPI report. Between those two days, we have the 30-year note auction and the 30-year bond auction. So you have two big treasury auctions, two big inflation reports, and a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of different Fed speakers speaking throughout the week. And then also don't forget that we are officially back in earnings season. As of Friday of this week, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Citi, we are kicking off the next earning season. So I hope you enjoyed your one, two, three, four week break because we are getting after it once again. Now, if you want all this information in just kind of an easy, accessible way, another reason to sign up for Locals and this one you get for free. You don't even have to be in the Discord. It'll just come to your email inbox every single weekend. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. But I list out all the major things you should be paying attention to and give you the associated times, all the earnings, and then I highlight the ones that I think you might care more about. And then I also give you the seasonality. For example, today, Monday, April 8th, this day has favored the bulls over the past 25 years, 60% of the time, with a pretty bullish profit factor of 3.7. And here's a look at the hypothetical equity curve that would be created by buying at open, selling at close on this individual day on the S&P 500 futures market. You could see 15 years ago is when it really started to favor the bulls. And we just had that nice, nice uptick. Now, is that a guarantee? Absolutely not. But it is something cool to pay attention to. And on that note, I need Rumble to vote. We are continuing our training competition uh, between YouTube on the left, Rumble on the right. As of right now, both groups are three for three. So I need you guys to vote and I need you guys to vote very, very quickly because you don't have much time. Like vote now, Rumble, vote right now. Rumble, vote, like you gotta speed it up. Uh, red, red, bullish, bullish, red, green, green, red, Green, green. Okay, so both are going bullish today. Both voted bullish. Uh, YouTube bull selected, rumble selected. All right, I have selected bull for both of these. Let's see how it goes. This is day four of the newest trading competition to see how it rocks. Uh, YouTube is on the left, rumble's on the right. I have selected the bull option for market open, and we are going to be finding out how good you guys are in about 15 ish seconds. 15-ish, roughly, give or take a bit. Give or take a bit. Here you guys go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. YouTube is on the left, Rumble's on the right. Account 157, account 158. I'm checking off everything. And or I selected part, part, order fill. You guys order already hit. Submitted. You guys already hit it that fast. You guys, do you see? You guys Target were on filled. the ball today. Both. Applause, applause around because you guys really crushed Order it this submitted. morning. You guys really, really crushed it this morning. I'm I'm proud of you guys. That was some of your fastest trading ever. Both groups got it. It took a portion of a Target second. Target filled. Um, good for Target you guys. Target filled. Good for you guys. Um, as Order you can see, submitted. you can hear that some things are still trading. I'm trading some of these algos. Uh, I don't know what's happening. One of these is not looking the strongest. Um, I guess it went long and just didn't have enough, enough in the tank. Uh, we have a lot going on right now. Are these all just long? 151. Did they get triggered long and it just was going for more? No, some of these are going short. So some are long, some are short. I don't know what's going on. We're going to have to circle back and see how some of this plays out. Uh, how can some be long and short and yet they're all down? Well, let's see how, let's see how it all plays out. Let's see how it all plays out. Uh, Cause how? 140? That one's long. 140 is long. What about 143? That one's also long. Why is this going for even more? Um, looks like they don't really know what they're doing. Some of them made money. Some of them are looking a little bit suspect. Uh, we're going to have to come back and reevaluate and see how that one actually plays out. Uh, but let's get to the one minute chart here. Dingity ding, ding, ding. The market is open, team. The market is open. Uh, coin is moving, obviously, with Bitcoin looking pretty freaking strong. Here's Bitcoin trading at 72. Coins off to the races. The spy picking up a little bit. The Qs don't know which way they're going to go. 
um all those algos that are trading they're trading on the nasdaq futures market so it's going to be most associated with the cues in the bottom left of your screen and while we're talking about it we might as well bring up the options market to see what's going on see what's going on with that order Del submitted delta notional what just happened so some money just i think got locked in so some money got locked in but some of these are looking a little bit suspect like this one right here. And wait, these are trading again now? Uh-oh. Target filled. 140. Oh, brother. What's happening? 159. All right. So for whatever reason, we are still Target filled. very much going in different ways i don't know how you could simultaneously be bullish and bearish and then losing on all of them that's that's a little bit confusing you know uh well that one was really close to hitting and just didn't hit so that's that's a thing to consider uh 143 143 okay target these, filled these are way behind where they need to be all right I'm going to have to memorize these ones and try to figure out what in the world went wrong. But anyway, as those are still doing their thing, let's check out this. All right. A little bit choppy. Options market not really making its mind up. We're getting some form of a bounce. I think we're getting some form of a bounce. I don't know. Time will tell. Spy. People are indecisive this morning. Indecisive. We're not really getting a clear trend to the upside or to the downside. And it's this choppiness that is uh, very, very much bumming me out. Very, very much bumming me out, if I'm being honest. Are we going to bounce here? Are we going to bounce? Uh, so the five minute, just looking at the overnight session, bullish, bullish, bullish. So as of now, and obviously this could change on a moment's notice, but when I'm looking at three, four different time frames, bullish, 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 bullish. Once again, this is all the S&P 500 futures market. So um, my knee jerk reaction would be to be bullish out of the gate, but let's see how things really start to go. Uh, let's get this up a little bit of a different story on the one minute here. Order submitted a little bit of a different story. The Tar target filled. That's dude. This is what's happening. I think I'm about to lose one, two, three, four, five, six different accounts. So 14 of the accounts have been good. But six of these accounts are a little bit suspect. And it's just because it went just enough to trigger long right at, I guess, 931. And now it's a bit suspect. Yeah, these are about to get blown. Unless there's like a miracle comeback. But it'll cut it off at two five on each of these so there like i said there has to be a miracle recovery without it going much lower at all it had to bounce all the way back up uh i mean i guess we've seen crazier things but geez yeah the tech sector's taking a bit more of a hit this morning without a doubt oh now the spy is actually taking a hit too looks like the queues just hit their low from what would that low value be the close from friday just hit 440.51 must be it uh are we going to recover out of it are we going to somehow pull off a miracle here that's a if it doesn't that's a very very unfortunate beat a very very unfortunate beat but hey that's what happened someone said djt is ripping uh i don't think it is uh, no, it's dropping right now. Uh, we want to squeeze. We would all love to see a squeeze. Squeeze are fun. They're fun to watch in real time. Fun to watch. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Do something. Let the people party. Come on, cues. I would love to see a push. Let's just see a quick, the old quick rip up to 442. Uh, Bitcoin taking a bit of a breather. The spy seemingly under a bit of pressure. Is it because of the options market? 
options are kind of flat. There was the flow alert that went off at 934. And then right after that, the market dipped. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Um, is there any other major moving thing right now that we should have up? Any other major, major move that you guys are seeing? Anything crazy? Anything crazy? Uh, the market will tank at the eclipse. Why? What does the eclipse have to do with the market? Uh, when is the eclipse anyway? It depends where you live. I mean, obviously, it's going to show up at different times. Uh, I think for me here in New York, it's closer to like 3, 3.30. But I mean, there's places in the world right now that are probably already seeing it if they're very slow or like southern, like closer to the equator. Uh, can it be Growth Corp, CGC? Some of these marinara plays uh, up 5%. I think it's daily chart is looking pretty good too. Yeah, just a nice trend. Higher highs, higher lows. Looking, looking solid. Looking solid. Oh, the cues. I'm about to get screwed on these ones. I need a big recovery or I'm going to lose those accounts. Which, that's the name of the game with Apex. You play it as well Board as you Order can. filled. Yeah, order can't order order filled yeah those all just got busted um well they're about to all order get filled so 14 of the accounts good Six order of the canceled accounts order filled gone it just for whatever reason the algorithm you could see the trade it triggered um post 9 30 it like literally got in at the high of the day for whatever reason i guess i thought there'd be enough momentum and it got destroyed one 40, 43, 40. Let, let's see what these accounts were. 140. All right. 143. 143. Okay. So that one sucked. 150. 150. Okay. So that got blown. 146. I just want to know where these all went wrong. 153. 153 okay and then 145 145 okay so it's the 13s and the 23s that all had a bad beat today good to know for future reference all right so what were these accounts 140 143 140 143 i need to turn these all off or something weird's probably going to happen 150 146 150, 146, 150, 146, 150, what was this? Uh, 153, 153, where is that one? 153, 153, and then also 145, 145. All right, well, that's a bit of a bummer. That's a bit of a bummer, and then also I'll turn off yours so we don't, accidentally keep trading and i think that should be about it there might be a couple more trades today depending on what's going on bit of a bummer to lose some of those accounts but hey that's what happens at least we have all those other accounts still you'd hope well actually i think how many of them should definitively be good one two three four five five, six, seven, eight. So eight are realistic for the next pay period with three of them being a bit more obvious. So three are probably going to be good for the next payout period, which is literally a week from today, the 15th to the 19th of next week. So three of them are good. So if they survive two, four, 6,000, and then there's five more that are a bit more questionable, a bit more questionable, but that's how it works. Say la vie. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? And now, of course, it, it's going to bounce right after I take some form of a bad beat. Uh, do you like Apex? Yes, I do. It's I wouldn't think of it as like, quote unquote, normal trading. It's just it's definitely a beatable thing. I mean, I've showed you guys taking like hitting it making money uh you're not gonna ever be a hundred percent by it 
Um, but it just, it takes some time. It takes some patience to realize what in the world like is or isn't going on with it. Um, Tesla, what's happening with Tesla right now? It's up. I mean, nothing's moving in a sp like specifically particular, like amazing manner. I guess coins up the most coins up 7% just because Bitcoin is doing so well, recapturing 72,000 or almost 72. So coin is the biggest gator on my watch list. IBIT is up, obviously that makes sense. So crypto as of right now seems to be like the big winner seems to be the big winner of the day. Uh, the five minute potential breakdown, the 10 minute potential breakdown, the 30 minute saving itself, five minute potential breakdown, 10 minute potential breakdown, even 30 minute on the queues potential breakdown. So let's wait to see how this 30 minute bar plays out. And while we're waiting for that to happen, shout out to today's stream sponsor, Public. We've been partnered with them for a while. If you've watched any of these shows, there's a very, very good chance you've heard me talk about them in the past. The TLDR is that public is my favorite place to trade options. And I would argue that it should be yours as well because it is the most cost-effective way to trade options. I know of no other brokerage on this planet that gives you a rebate every single options contract you trade. When you buy then sell, you're getting two different rebates per options contract. It is free to download. It is free to sign up. There's no commission fees. There's no per contract fees. The most cost-effective way to trade options. And while you're there, even if you're trading stock, they don't engage in payment for order flow. They have a very built-out system for bonds. They have, you could just get the government yield if you so choose. There's a lot going on there. It is, I'm telling you this, it, it's worth it. It's worth the sign up. It's like, I mean, it costs you nothing. So inherently it's going to be worth it because it just is the time for you to download the app to your phone. But check it out. Pin to the top of chat in the description of the video. Shout out to Public for being a sponsor. And then also shout out to them for just having like the fact that they even came up with this idea that, oh, maybe people do really legitimately want um the rebates i have just never seen it before it's new it's novel i like it it's awesome um so by definition the most cost effective way to trade options pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video sign up it is free 167 per 50k account nope not at all um i guess it is if you never used uh, a code but i pay about like 30 dollars per account c bins uh on apex i don't know if of anyone that's ever paid 167. Uh, make freedom legal. I don't know what you're talking about. Unless you can't see it, but everyone's shit chatting. If you make 15 grand and make, if you lose 15 grand and make three, that doesn't add up. Um, obviously, you don't know what SIM defunded accounts are. That's not like a real legitimate loss because it's not my money. I didn't fund those accounts. Um, I, I guess I understand how you could think that on the, uh, like your initial look, but that doesn't make sense compared to top step. Oh, apex is better. At least from what I know, I've used top step a little bit, but I like apex a lot more because it's cheaper and I like their rules better. So when it's cheaper and the rules are better, I don't know why I would use something else. Um, I, I don't know like the particular advantage, but the way I trade and the way I look at these markets, um, I would just, I, I don't know. I like them better. Uh, Order submitted. Whoa. What was that? Order submitted. Order submitted. Hang on. Oh, brother. Now it's happening. Did I not turn off? I thought I turned it all off. Hmm. I guess I'll let it figure itself out, but it's doing a bit more trades here now. Uh, one of these, 144 just went live. 144, what's 144 trying to do? Try to go long, try to catch this rebound. Uh, that's the only one that is actively trading, just one account. One account is trying to make it through. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. 200. 230. Uh, but come on. Hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it. 
It's right there. This should be easy peasy. Come on. Come on. Come on. You could do it. What account is this? 144. Where's Target filled. All right. So that hit 144. So why did some of these get busted, even though it's the same time frame? I guess unlucky where it must have just barely hit it. And some of these got out while the other ones didn't. Um, because I was running the stream strategy on the same charts and some of them made their money and other ones didn't. Uh, which is interesting. Interesting, interesting. I'll have to do a bit of a review on it a little bit later. Uh, but in danger of the breakdown, but look at this, already trying to recover, 5-minute trying to recover, 10-minute trying to recover, 30-minute bouncing off of it. 5-minute uh, on the tech sector, a little bit more suspect, still below its EMA cloud. The 10-minute got smashed, but trying to come back up, and the 30-minute right in that like kind of danger. Is it going to break down? Is it not going to break down type of a vibe? But in terms of the daily chart, um, inside bar, no clear direction yet. Uh, how are the options looking? Options did bounce, but literally as we're looking at it right now, starting to tilt. Um, if you're trading SPX, the actual S&P 500, there is a hedge wall at 5,195 today. Just want to put that on everyone's radar. Want to put that on everyone's radar. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. What it, tomorrow is Tuesday. We have the bond auction, I think Wednesday and Thursday. We have the CPI report Wednesday, the PPI report Thursday. Uh, so two bond auctions, two inflation Order reports. Submitted. A lot, a lot. A, are we trading again? 149 is now trading. They're po these trades are popping Target off out filled. of nowhere. All right. I don't know how many more are set to trade today. Uh, I changed the code a little bit. Some of them, instead of allowing them to run in the morning, uh, I triggered, I said, okay, you have to wait till 9.45, but I don't know how many more are set up to trade today. Uh, patience, 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 patience. You sound Russian this morning? Me? I sound Russian? Russian? I don't know if I've ever been accused of sounding Russian, but... Uh, I, I guess I'll take it as somewhat of a compliment. I guess I'll take it as somewhat of a compliment, you know? When Weeble listing thoughts on targets, when Weeble listing and thoughts on targets, back is still at 11 bucks, been holding for a bit. Oh, I wouldn't touch it. Personally. Um, I don't know what makes Weeble newer novel. And like the things that are recently popped, being Robin Hood stock, Weeble isn't doing. So I have no targets whatsoever. And I don't even have particularly an interest in engaging in it. Matt, have you ever considered quitting trading and selling stuff on eBay and said, oh, literally all the time? I'm just like, how how can I get into this game of the like just the eBay, the eBay space? That's what I want to do. The eBay space. 100%. I wonder. I really, really wonder. I think I, I already have an idea of like the, the code, that strategy that went bust on some of those. I already have an idea of how I could fix some of them. And I so, all right, I'll code it up tonight and we'll, we'll, we'll revisit tomorrow. Oh, but fuck, now I have to get some of those accounts back to the PA status shit well i guess there's no rush on it because they're not the ones that blew out today for any of you guys who know about sim defunded they're not going to be eligible for the next payout period anyway so there's no particular rush on it because even at earliest yeah they're going to be a day off no matter what so the next one will be april may may 1st to the 3rd would be the next period that they're actually eligible five ten so there's no rush on it okay so i don't have to do anything too crazy i don't have to do anything too crazy quite yet on those but it is still a bit of a bummer of course you want as many uh getting through the payout period as you possibly can um but i do i have some ideas i have i have some ideas of improvement without a doubt 
um i myself uh so i'm kind of i think i'm done with the apex trades for the day i'm not a hundred percent sure how many are still gonna fire uh do, 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 do. not this one 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 did these trade already 150 and one 155 mm, yes okay i think those traded uh 149 i think we saw that yeah we awkwardly saw that one so that one traded twice 144 that one traded twice okay 161 i just want to know if i could actually shut this program down or not that also traded twice interesante mi amigo interesante one i think i'm good to shut this down i think it traded all the times that it wanted to trade today all right i think i'm good so we can we can wrap this up i think that's good so the only other thing i really need to do today is to sell some premium a little bit of a premium selling uh shorts just merkin djt it's annoying you know i no. where was it i was looking at some of the short interest on djt this morning and it makes no sense to me it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever what in the world is happening here djt um so even with the cost to borrow no that was rum i wanted djt we could go over well now that we're here we might as well look at rums uh short interest 18.8 percent .8%. cost of borrow still high at 44 utilization almost maxed out at 98 uh so not too much of a change there but in terms of djt this is the part that doesn't make sense to me all right so utilization high 94 cost of borrow sky high 386 but yet they're saying that the short interest and this is just an estimation and maybe it's wonky because of the despacking process i'm not fully sure but they're saying that somehow the shorts have dropped from 21 percent to seven percent so something's a little bit wonky in their like predictive model and once again we're not really going to know because the actual short interest numbers come out every single two weeks so right now it's just an estimate uh, but I think we should be getting the next one somewhat soon. It's also still on the threshold list. So when I look at this data, it something's weird. Something's not right. Well, and you could tell that it, just from the straight up fact that it's on the threshold list. But when the cost of borrow is this high, how is the short interest plummeting when there's still this much demand for it? It just, it just doesn't really add up. Um, so we won't know in definitively, like until we get the next report, um, these are just estimates in the meantime, but time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, did you ever reach out to Ortex about DJT? No, I didn't because it literally just got done with the despacking process. So we're probably going to have to wait for the data to get cleaned up for that to happen. It's not uh like a non-negligible thing when you go from like dwac to djt with all of the processing and paperwork and the underlying stats um so i think it just takes some time for the data like it's not going to be there right away <coughs> so that's why i'm waiting for one of the short interest cycles to pass where we can get the actual numbers from the exchanges uh and just go from there All right, and right now the spy is going flat. The queues are going flat. Bitcoin taking a little bit of a breather, but still right at 72,000. Coin is the biggest gainer on my watch list of the day. Tesla's having a pretty solid day as well at 173. Amazon slightly green. IBIT makes sense. You have ETH that's up 3,600. Uh, some people are pointing out the Marinara plays uh, CGC. You can look at MJ, which is the ETF that tracks that sector up one. 0.6%. SMH semiconductors barely green on the day. What else? The dollar. How's the dollar doing? 
the dollar taking a little bit of a breather. How are bonds doing? Bonds recovering a little bit. So that means yields have to be down a little bit. If not, not the craziest movements, um, not the craziest movements thus far out of the gate. I guess we could throw up coin just because it is the biggest gainer coin right there. Are your cords for market open bullish or bearish on Discord? Uh, no. I mean, I guess they could be, but they're at this moment in time, they're not. The, the major thing right now in the Discord is private lectures on the weekend and a lot of discussion uh, related to options trading. If, it, if there's a desire, obviously, I'm more than willing to get more into futures and like this system, but I'm also probably like, I mean, those ones, the market open stuff, they're pretty rudimentary. I have no issue giving those away. But for more of the advanced systems, I wouldn't just give those away. That'd be a little bit crazy. Uh, but for those basic ones, yeah, I, that's fine. I mean, there's really not much to it. Uh, actually switched from Fidelity to Schwab. I'm not really the biggest fan of either of them. Uh, my retirement accounts are on Fidelity, but when I want to do certain things on Fidelity, they make it such a pain in the ass, like a huge pain in the ass to the point that they're kind of making me angry. You can't uh, paper trade on Fidelity. I left Schwab because I was managed there and they lost so much of my money. I hate even thinking about it. Well, I think you could keep it on Schwab without doing their management. Uh, DXYZ is ripping. Isn't this the one? So I just actually, we were talking about this in the private lecture yesterday. DXYZ, I guess, has some equity stake in SpaceX. Is that right? That's what we were kind of talking about a little bit. Um, I don't know too much. You can only zero DTM fidelity via phone call. Uh, not fully accurate. Uh, you could trade SPX. You could trade some of the European style contracts without that. Um, and then for the American style, I think you have to have over like a million in your account. They have some strange rules, but I know you could trade zero DTE European style, such as like SPX without a phone call or anything like that. Um, and open AI? Really? Really? Destiny Tech 100 has... Let's look this up. Let's look this up. The Destiny Tech 100. Pronounced Destiny. The Destiny Tech 100 is a closed-end management investment company registered under the 1940 Act. We intend to invest in a portfolio of 100 of the top venture-backed private technology companies, providing everyday investors access to these private market leaders for the first time. All right. Well, who's in it? All right. So it's a DXYZ 2.5%. Uh, That's kind of high. Uh, current portfolio is 23 companies. They currently have 100. Um so 30% of their portfolio is SpaceX. That doesn't mean they own 30% of SpaceX. It's just their portfolio gives you exposure to it. Um, Epic Games, OpenAI, Stripe, Instacart, Public, Jeeves, Discord, Plaid. So these are just, I guess, like large, well-known tech plays is i guess it's kind of a cool concept i like it i it is cool that they have exposure to spacex um interesting who runs it? who like set this up uh prospectus what is their prospectus Who created this? Does anyone know that? Destiny Tech 100 recently formed non-diversified closed-end management investment company with limited operating history throughout this prospectus. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, my initial reaction to it is it sounds pretty cool. 
but this is also my first read through of who it is. Does anyone off the top of their head know who made this? Um, is it backed by like, I mean, the website leads a little bit to be desired. This is a interesting decision. We'll say, did they invest in public, like public the sponsor today? They did. That's crazy. Okay. So they have exposure to public. Wow. Huh. That's pretty cool. I'm going to look more into it. I think it's exciting. Like I said, the first time I heard of it was yesterday. Uh, huh. 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 Interesting. Spy flat. Q's flat. Decisions are not being made. Destiny the streamer. Are you going to show us the eclipse? Uh, I think depending on where you are, it's already like going on right now. The, are people like streaming this? Where else? Where else? Where else? Where else? Where else? I thought there'd be some sort of live video of the eclipse of where it's happening. I think for me, it won't like I'm in the New York area. I don't think I'll be seeing it till like about power hour, like 3 PM ET, I believe is where it should be happening. Uh, roughly that time. But I think the more South you are, the earlier in the day, you're going to see it. So I think people, I don't know, like Texas or whatever, uh, will probably be seeing it closer to like noon. Uh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I, I saw some videos on Twitter this morning that kind of had the time lapse of where people were supposed to see it. Um, I guess if anyone has that, feel free to tag it in me, uh, tag me in it so I can show it to the rest of the stream. Trying to track it down. Trying to track it down. Spy's looking a little bit heavy there. 308 in Indianapolis. Well, yeah, that's because you're up by me. Dallas was 130 in Central Time. So that would be. Wait, Dallas was 130? So I guess your stream through Power Hour? No, not going to happen. Wow. Okay. I guess that's all happening a lot faster than I thought it would. Um, or a lot closer in time. I thought it'd take a bit more, but good to know. Spy not doing the most. I suppose we could tag this just so we know if there's a breakdown coming. Uh, kind of a muted open thus far. Uh, a little bit worried about this five minute. It is clearly holding below the cloud. The 10 minutes even now holding below the cloud. Broke down, try to recover. Not the most healthy. The 30 minutes right at that danger zone. Uh, on the NASDAQ, five minute holding below, 10 minute holding below, and the 30 minute is in danger. If we look at the options market, little down, little up, little down. Uh, not too indicative of a move. Uh, so patience, 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 patience. Patience, patience. I'll schedule a breakdown for today. Oh, man. What do we have here? Is this it? Yeah, okay. Cool. Thank you. Here's the time frame. Um, all right. So in Texas, about 240. And then it's only like an hour later that we're seeing it up here. So it's, it's this afternoon for... I guess kind of the central to Eastern U S right here. Um, so it's almost in power hour, depending where you are. So it's in the latter half of the day, but it actually is kind of ripping through pretty quick. Then I guess if you're on the West coast bummer, you're missing out on it. You're missing out. The tail risk today is meaningful percentage of the country going blind. All right, what else do we have going on? Yeah, I show speed, I believe. People are weird, man. People are 
all sorts of weird today. I saw the Roadhouse, the new Roadhouse, and then over the weekend, I watched the original Roadhouse. And some of you are going to get mad about this, but the new Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal is by every definition better than the original Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. And that's coming from a person who I rarely, rarely ever think like the remakes are better. I, I'm generally a person who thinks the original is the original and it's what you should be watching. And it's like the quality piece of quote unquote art. Um, but no, 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 no. I, it, within the past two weeks of my life, I've watched both Roadhouse movies. And I am telling you the new one with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor is better than the one with Patrick Swayze. And if you don't think that, it's because you haven't seen the two movies. It's just the Dalton character in the original Roadhouse. He's not believable. Apparently, he's just already like this high quality fighter that it doesn't explain it at all. There's no character development. There's no character development for the antagonist of like why he's being a dick. The the newer movie, the screen right, the actual script writing is so much better. So much better. Um you guys can think you guys could have your opinions on it, but unless your opinion aligns with mine, you're wrong. Uh, it, it is, you are completely wrong. It, it's just so much better. The, the only thing I could understand the argument that for the character, Patrick Swayze might've portrayed the character better than Jake Gyllenhaal did. That's the only argument that I'd be like somewhat ready to listen to. But in terms of the cinematography, the script writing, the acting from the secondary and tertiary characters, uh, everything about the new one was better. It really, really was. It, it really, really was. And if you don't agree with that, that's fine. You're just, that's cool. We're all entitled to our own opinions, but I just want you to know that your opinion is wrong. And it just is what it is. I, if you truly believe that the first one was better, you're not being objective. You're just wanting to want a Patrick Swayze movie to be better. And I get it. I'm a big Patrick Swayze fan. I, I, I don't like that I'm saying this, but it just is what it is. I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. It is legitimate. Like, it's a tough thing for me to say because I'm generally in the camp of the like remakes being trash. I really, really am. And this one is the, the only other one that I can think of that the remake I might have liked better is actually it. Like the scary movie with the clown. I like I went in and I was like, dude, this is going to suck. And maybe it's because I had the bar set so, so low that maybe it was just like a time and place thing. But I really thought the new it was going to suck. And I was mad that they were me making it. And then I watched it and I have to say, um, I was pleasantly surprised like in the moment. Um, so stoked about that. One, two, three, four, five, five. Fuck. How did those all lose, man? Uh, it was a stupid movie. Roadhouse? Well, if you thought the new Roadhouse was a stupid movie, you definitely thought that the original. And the new one at least had some sort of cohesive story. The original one did not whatsoever. Um, so if you thought it was corny, then by definition, you had to think that the first one was corny. Like, for sure. Please say the TV miniseries of It was better than the movie. I didn't even know they made a TV miniseries of the original It. I agree with Matt. The new one was better. I I appreciate that. Thank you. Man, the market's really not doing anything right now. We're just waiting. It's just, it's pinned sideways. We're just doing, at least Bitcoin's looking good. On the daily chart, just a lack of movement. Q's, same thing. Yeah, we're just, as of now, not moving much, team. As of now, not moving much. Uh, I'm sent up. So both the spy and the cues hit their downside, not a gap fill, but they hit the close from Friday, cleaning up the chart a little bit, not a real like legitimate gap. Uh, so the spy hit it, the cues hit it. Now we're both on top. We'll see. 
Matt, I'm in the 96% coverage area. Texas surrounding towns have declared state of emergency, fear of running out of gas and food. Why is everyone going so nuts about this? I don't, I guess I don't get it. Matt, uh, what's going on with the insiders at Rumble? I mean, it's the 10B51. Uh, people, I'm a little bit confused about people's confusion because it was publicly announced a while ago that this was happening. And now that it's happening, people are like, what do you mean? It's just, it's the 10B51. A while ago, you follow, file the paperwork and they say, hey, in whatever X amount of time, a lot of time, months, they're selling him. It's it's not like they're pulling the ripcord selling all their shares. They're selling a portion of it. Uh, I mean, they still live in the same world we do. Like they still have bills to pay. Um, what do I think of BA Boeing, oh, dude? Boeing is like falling apart, man. It looks like trap. I mean, lower highs, lower lows. The I mean, the daily chart very obviously bearish but then on top of it the news it seems like every single week there's horrible news related to it um so i wouldn't no it seems awful i mean there was a whole nother uh let me see if i could find it uh, i think or like i haven't posted yeah right here Another one, uh, Boeing 737 operated by Southwest was forced to turn around and land back after its engine cover broke off and hit the plane wing during takeoff. Another Boeing story. Just, I don't, I don't think the company is going to fail because it would be a national security threat. So I don't think the government will let it fail, but there's no way I'm investing in it. Dude, it, it's just dying, man. It looks so bad. Like every single week, there's another negative story related to Boeing. So I just don't see how you could be uh, comfortable investing in it. All right. What else is going on? Bitcoin. We know Bitcoin's going. Market's still inherently not doing. It's just pinned sideways. What else is happening? What else is happening? Did our main account teach us anything? Love TikTok investors. Remember, it's only a problem if you give up. All right. Just sold my stove for 200 so I can cover my rent. Rent's due. Just no money down a hundred it might be harder than i thought some sort of like gambling motivation uh-oh he's gonna hit a 21 not enough funds i don't know what to do anymore my neighbors are gone and their house has at least <laughs> he sold their copper oh <laughs> <laughs> all in on 19 did it hit 19 the comeback no way <laughs> why pay rent when you can buy the house that's that's what you gotta do that's what you gotta do couldn't pay me to do this for any amount started selling trade lines on my credit cards i'm using this site this isn't sponsored i just want to point out that they're like legit and so essentially what this website. is if a person has bad credit but they know that they need to get a mortgage or a car loan or something they pay money to this website this website matches them up with me based on what they're looking for and i add them as an authorized user to my credit card for a set amount of time they don't physically get any sort of card they don't get my name they don't have my information I have all of their information, um, but the thing is, because they're an authorized user, they get my credit history, and that raises their credit score. They get a better interest rate on whatever loan they're trying to get. And I would not be doing this if I didn't know multiple people in person who had also done this and like said it was legit 
because it seems so sketchy. I no. gave this website no, no, my no, banking no, information no, no. so that they can direct deposit me money. And the amount you get paid depends on your credit limit, the length of card has been open, and no. various things. And no. so the ones I have ranges from $40 to $80, which might not sound like much, but if I get $40 and it took me five minutes to add an authorized user on my credit card, that's worth it for me. So I've done this a few times now. Mm -mm. I think I have eight possible spots on my different credit cards. They've paid out about $200 so far, and I have another 200 pending. I don't know if I would recommend it from the other side because these people are giving me their full name, birth date, address, and social security number. Like they just have to trust that I'm not gonna sell that on the black market. I don't even know how to do that. No. So their no. secret's safe with me, but I don't think they're getting any of my information anyway. No, no team, no. I think we got most of these. different ways you could play a game you could look at the spread you could look at player props the total but we're gonna get again a little spicy here this is gonna be a sweat i wish i could give you a ton of research of why this is gonna hit under but when we look at uconn they like to slow down the tempo the same thing uconn goes could win they they're playing the tonight game. right against so purdue slow down uconn's offense and we see we like to go off what we just saw so for northwestern for example they just put up 77 points on florida atlantic but you have to remember 19 of those points they came in overtime so i expect this to be a slow game all around good defenses on both sides of the ball Risk-free investment, my ass. Risk. What's this guy? This is like a motivational. In other words, please buy my course. I spent the last $7,500 I had in my bank account to hire one of my first mentors. And that literally left me with no cash, so I got a tattoo of a boat burning on fire right after I made that investment. Oh, this yeah. was to signify that I was burning the ships and there was no way back. After I bought the course, I spent the next 14 days doing 12 to 14 hours per day of studying the course and taking action so that I could grow my business. Oh, Two yeah, weeks brother. after I spent every dollar I had in my bank to hire the mentor, I made my first $5,000 dollar sale then i went out and i got a phoenix tattoo emerging from the ashes of he would have been able to spend less money if he just wasn't getting the tattoos during the financially trying time in his life as he stated he didn't have money and yet he then had money to go get tattoos not a necessity of the flame to signify the fact that once I burned the ships, I was able to emerge as a new beast take this video as a sign that it's time to start going all in I spent the last 7,500. Hell yeah, brother. Alpha, Alpha Sigma life, bro. Just finance, grinding, grinding on some finance, just grinding on some opportunity, just grinding, just fucking burn the ships. Just got to psychologically be there, brother. You just got to you know, commit, man. You just got to, you just got to fucking commit, commit, just got to commit. I like the other, um, I, I like the other ones a little bit. I like the gambling guy a little bit more. I'm going to have to, do you need a catchphrase? I do need a catchphrase. Should we use today's stream to generate? This is a sign that I'm going to full port. Yeah, this, this should be the sign that you're full porting today. All in, commit. <laughs> we just got to burn those ships. Just got to burn the ships, man. No, I agree with all of you guys. I agree that you just got to, you just got to commit, dude. You just got to, you just got to commit. Um, <laughs> you just got to burn the ships and then you got to be a phoenix rising from the ashes and then you got to get some body art to document the whole process even though you had no money whatsoever. It's the only it's the only way to do it. Uh what do we have? Hang on, you guys didn't send in reacts. Let's see what you guys have here. Make one of these before the solar eclipse. Easy DIY eclipse viewer. 
you can make a super simple and safe Eclipse viewer out of stuff you probably have in your house. Here's what you're gonna need. A shoe box, some tape, a pen, some foil, a piece of paper, and some scissors. First thing we're gonna do is cut some squares in the back of our shoe box. Next, you'll take that piece of foil and tape it over one of the holes you created in the back of the shoe box. Once that's done, take your pen and poke a very small hole in the foil. And now with the sun at your back, look right through the hole that doesn't have the foil over it, aim it, and you should be able to see the sun safely. Happy eclipse viewing. Well, that was incredibly boring. And I wouldn't do that. That's just a lame way to do it. Imagine spending an entire year's salary on some stupid shoes. Ooh, dude, some of this shoe flipping stuff, I haven't done it myself, but there's serious money in this. Some yellow lobsters. Yeah, bro, that's a real cool shoe, bro. What size is it? Uh, 9.5. 9.5? Yeah, bro. What's your asking price on it? I'll, I want like 60K on it, bro. Can I check it out, if you don't mind? Uh, see, yeah, I... bro, just be very careful, please. All right, but... 60K? Bands and extra laces. Yeah, bro, everything's in there. There's no market on them. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many pairs are there? Uh, there's you about, know? that's one out of 36. Would you do 40K for them? 40K, I'd be too low, brother. Uh, I work with you, but that's too low. What's your, talk to um, you. I'll do 55. 55? Mm -hmm. 42? 42, that's too low, brother. Still too low? Yeah, still too low. Even cash? Uh, I mean, still too low, brother. What's the best you can do? 52, bro. 52? Yeah. I mean, I'll offer you 46. I mean, when are you getting that type of cash? I'll run it for my, my bottom price would be 50K. 50K right now, yeah. Price? All cash, bro. That's what I would do. $50,000 for a yeah, that's pair what I would of do, brother. shoes? Let's run it. Yeah. He's going to say, yeah, this feels like it's pre-recorded. Right, or... There you go. They just carry that much cash on them? Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Who won the deal? The dude getting cash for a pair of shoes. He definitely won the deal. All right. We did that. It was sketchy. Uh, you'll never believe what my mom accidentally did to dinner. Okay. I feel so bad. Look at what my poor mother did. She just cooked this beautiful meal this like tuscan chicken and this amazing sauce with a new olive oil that she ordered from online this pure greek olive oil that she had ordered online this delicious meal that she spent forever on and only after she'd finished did we discover that it's shower gel she just had to leave the room because she's so angry Use the, the chicken here. tastes like straight up soap. She tried it? How do you feel right no now? No need to try it. Like, I want to hit something. I want to physically hurt someone and hit something really hard. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. All right. I'm going to set up some alerts for this potential breakout. Literally, as I do it. All right. We're breaking out. I guess it's time for me to... Slap on some trades. Slappity slap slap some trades. All right. What could we do today? What kind of shenanigans should I get into? Let's sell some preem. Let's sell some premium. All right, let's see if we can actually get this order filled. And in the meantime, let's slap in, let's do this with Piper. If you're in the Discord, I'm putting in Piper as we speak. Uh, what is today? The 8th. Today is the 8th. Today is the 8th. All right.
Okay, we are good to rip. All right, that's in there. Uh, if you're in the Discord, Piper just fired. Put it in there. Uh, and then for me, mine did not fire, unfortunately. Orders. Modify. Fuck, that really ran away from me. That really ran away from me. Okay. Options. Man, I'm chasing it. I'm still... Oh, finally, just got a fill. All right, I had to chase it up a little bit, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Did I play it the right way? Uh-oh, did I do a credit spread? In this? No, I didn't. Okay. I think I played it in the right direction. All right. And I think I'm pretty much done for the day. Obviously, I have to manage this just in case shit goes against me. But other than that, should be relatively good. Should be relatively good. Uh... All right. That's also in the Discord. Now we're good. Just waiting, 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 waiting. Uh, Bitcoin taking a little bit of a hit. Where was that? DXYZ. This one up twenty five percent. DXYZ. This thing is just taking off. Eight dollars all the way up to seven. That's crazy. I need to do more research on that one. All right, what else do we have here? Reels don't spare nobody. It's like, see what's going on. And smile for the camera because it's only right. <laughs> Dude, the internet is savage. Everything is completely locked down at the CVS store in Vegas. Is there a dystopian future we want to live in? Look at this, guys. This is ridiculous. So you got to empty here and everything is locked down. This is the new world order. Incredible. Yeah, we'll I these eye drops in deodorant. I'm out in Vegas and everything is locked up. Is this the way we want to live? Cameras everywhere and it still doesn't stop. Incredible. So frustrating. Everything is locked down. It's kind of sad. Too fun. Yeah, this is the point that we're at. So everything is locked down and they have to let you in if you need something. Messed Incredible. up. Incredible. Messed up. So now, something that would normally take me five minutes is going to take me. It, it is really frustrating because there's not that many workers and then you have button. to wait and wait and wait. It's just Taking so annoying. Taking me three times the amount of time to shop. Incredible. So I got to wait for someone to come here. Great. Yeah, that's nuts. This can't be real. Who lives in Alaska that can confirm this? I can't pick up my jaw off the ground right now. All right. So oh, the let's prices go have to be nuts. Alaska. All right. If eight dollars for down, some donuts. Fifteen. You can get a PB and J, and um, you're gonna go ahead and start out with so inflation $10, plus just the bread. supply, and all the shipping some required. Peanut butter for fourteen eighty nine. So uh, if you're balling on Whoa. a budget, you can always do that. Ketchup is a good eighteen seventy nine. So if you brutal. Like beans or canned goods, they're just only eight oh three. I legit feel bad for the people so, um, in Alaska. That's great. You got forty seven dollars for some steak, and if you do steak and potatoes, let's go ahead and get some twenty six dollars. Yep, twenty six dollars for potatoes. When I tell you thirteen dollars for juice? juice in my house, juice wouldn't even be allowed at this point. Like, we will only be drinking water. So let's go see how much the waters are. 
you know what? On second hand, we don't need to drink water. 38 At this point, per we case can go of outside, water. Get a bucket of ice or snow and we can let it melt and we will drink a bucket of snow water every day at these prices. Yep. Dude, that's crazy. Cheese. And chips, we won't even know what chips are anymore because they're just not allowed. $11.99 for a bag of chips. Or you could go ahead and get this cute little party tray for forty ninety nine. Okay. You get the crackers, the cheese, and all that. Twelve dollars for a pint oh of goodness. Ben and Jerry's. Ten sixty nine. Okay, not bad, not bad. Look at that on sale. Or you can go ahead and get a bigger one for sixteen fifty nine. Go ahead and get that ice cream. All right, another sale. Okay. Eighteen fifty. The cost cutter. For the pie. I like the sales. Yeah, Oof. that's that's right. It's a six pack of toilet paper. Twenty dollar. You see it, or you can what get the twelve. What is going bolts. down in Alaska? Mm-hmm. Look at that juice. Seventeen twenty nine. I guess you just for the have to learn photosynthesis if you're in Alaska. Special. It was it's like the only viable option. This. this is what you're getting right here. Mm-hmm. Seventeen dollars. Can't even get a cute little pack of juice because that's a good fifteen dollars and then you think the noodles would be like the no oh, okay i see the sale 1839 okay they even did it to top yeah, robin can't even get noodles out here that's brutal that is beyond brutal all right market did break to the upside we'll set some alerts we'll set some alerts And there it goes. All right. And then options are picking up as well. Bueno, bueno, bueno. What else do we have going on? What else do we have going on? Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. All right. Are we missing anything else? Any other crazy breaking news that we should be going over? I mean, if it, it's almost like oddly quiet for the week we still have ahead. I guess this, everyone's just waiting. Sold to U.S. investors or drawing from the second large of reckless in China position on what a happened with Morgan this Wallen? morning saying country music star Morgan Wallen for allegedly throwing a chair from the rooftop of a bar. They say it landed about three feet from two officers standing below <laughs> the six story venue. Wallen posted a $15,000 bond overnight. He faces three counts of reckless endangerment uh, and one of disorderly conduct as well. Real... <laughs> and now I'm going to send a very long toss back to Sarah Eisen in Beijing. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Contessa, beauty of television here in Beijing tonight, where Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is just wrapping up four full days on the ground. Four in full days. In the south of China, the manufacturing hub, and then here in Beijing, where she met with high ranking officials. The highest was Premier Li, who's the number two leader in China. The purpose of her trip was to just continue to open lines of communication about the economic relationship here. We talked about some of her concerns with overcapacity and potentially Chinese dumping. We, she also had conversations with Chinese leadership about TikTok and that bill that's going through Congress that President Biden did say he would sign if it passes the Senate. I asked the Treasury Secretary how those conversations went with the Chinese and whether they were concerned. I think this is an important and profitable uh, company. And I think they're concerned by the prospect that they would be um, forced out of the United States or what the legislation really requires is that they would uh, sell the company um, to yeah. a domestic purchaser. So um, I think they certainly have concerns about that. Do you think the Chinese government will allow the U.S. assets sold to U.S. investors or U.S. company? I honestly don't want to get to get ahead of where we are on this. Um, the president has said he would sign the House legislation. You also brought up matters of national security on this trip and said that there would be consequences for China if they increase support militarily for Russia. 
And we also heard this week, reportedly, from Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who said that that was happening on a large scale. So are we looking at sanctions on Chinese companies? Well, it's not only Chinese companies. We would feel that any, particularly any financial institution that facilitated um, trade in dual-use goods or strictly military goods in violation of our sanctions and aiding Russia's military, um, we would consider sanctioning. The president issued a recent executive order that would enable Treasury to impose sanctions on financial institutions that are found to be doing this in a systematic way. And we've not used this tool yet, but it is one that would be available. And what I've tried to make clear is that um, we stand ready to act if we see significant violations by, especially by financial institutions. Um, In China? That, well, and other countries as well. What about the Chinese government and its support of Russia? Well, China is entitled to have a relationship with Russia. What we have made clear is that it is unacceptable to us for China to support Russia militarily. And that uh, doesn't say that China can't have a relationship with Russia. Uh, China and Russia do a lot of trade. Much of it is unproblematic, but anything that involves aiding Russia's military in their brutal war against Ukraine is unacceptable to us, and um, we have the ability to sanction it. We've also seen increasingly close economic ties between China and Iran, and especially now with Iran increasing threats against Israel. I do wonder how concerned you are and American businesses should be about this. Well, we have very strong sanctions in place against Iran. And when we encounter ongoing violations, we've had a number of sanctions, actions that have tried to address that. That's a, an area of great concern. But just in terms of China's relationship, China's relationship with Russia, with Iran, is that a matter that U.S. businesses who do a lot of business in China should be concerned about? To the extent that it creates a national security risk for us, it is something we stand ready to address. Should American companies be reducing their exposure to China on a manufacturing basis? Look, I, I think um, trade and investment between China and the United States is valuable. Many American companies are doing excellent business in China have been here for a long time. The same is true of Chinese companies in the United States. And this trade is beneficial. And the great majority of it is uncontroversial. And I think we should not do anything to impede that trading and investment relationship. But in areas where we have national security concerns, as we have clearly demonstrated, we stand ready to act to protect our national security. That may mean export controls or other, other interventions. And we try to target those narrowly so that they don't have broad-based impact on China's economy uh, as a whole. And we feel strongly and have agreed with the Chinese mm -hmm. that we need a level playing field. Now, when we interfere, when we have regulations um, that affect our trade and investment with China, or if it's national security or other reasons, we go through an open and transparent rule writing process. We put out proposed regulations. We accept comments. The Chinese have the opportunity to comment. We take the input and we write regulations. It's very clear what we're doing. In China's case, often the support, we believe there's maybe often a lot of support in ways that are not transparent. And that really is a, a, a meaningful difference. But we're not trying to stifle trade and investment 
broadly speaking. So I would not want to advise Americans firms, speaking. don't do business in China. But if I'm Tim Cook of Apple and looking at the geopolitical relationship and the national security concerns, ultimately, won't that trump the economic relationship? Well, the purpose of the dialogue that I've been involved with now for well over a year uh, with our Chinese counterparts is intended to make sure that that does not happen, that we don't have an unintended escalation of tensions, that we understand one another's red lines, we avoid misunderstandings, and we preserve um, economic interactions that are beneficial to both sides. We manage our relationship. Gold hit we another need to new all-time high. Responsibly, so that both sides can continue to benefit. You put a lot of work into this, and, and you said in your news conference this afternoon that the relationship is in a better place than it was a year ago. Definitely. Do you worry about the relationship in one year from now if Meta, President Trump gets Another new all-time high. Well, I don't want to get into politics. Um, I'm governed by the Hatch App, Act. I Netflix looking um, good. feel looking President good. Biden and President Xi directed um, myself and the Vice Premier of Lafon strong. to work toward a better, more stable, predictable relationship with one another, to stabilize our relationship, to try to manage our differences, create better channels of communication, and importantly, work together on many things where we can both make contributions um, that are important to the globe, whether it's dealing with climate change or um, other issues, public health issues, uh, debt issues of low-income countries. And that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do. We have greatly deepened our relationships, and um, I feel our relationship in this economic sphere is in a much better place. Well, one thing that's helped the dynamic is the U.S. is coming with a strong hand right now on mm -hmm. our economy. I think we can feel great about our economy. I was going to ask you what you made of this last jobs report. Well, it just shows that U.S. is firing on all cylinders. I mean, in terms of short-term performance, inflation is coming down. The job market is very strong. Growth is... Um, really been a lot stronger than I would have expected at this, at this stage. We had 3.1 percent growth last year. Inflation's coming down. Um, labor supply is up. And um, we're seeing some of the pressures we, we might worry about coming from the labor market impacting inflation. They're subsiding, but unemployment remains very low. You're still confident we can get to 2 percent this year? We've seen oh, a little yeah, bit of a flare-up so far this year. Well, I think it will continue to come down over time. That's my expectation. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we, we can certainly get into the twos. And recovery stays intact with or without Fed rate cuts? So I'm not going to make a <laughs> forecast on Fed rate cuts. Um, the Fed has indicated that um, they want to make sure that inflation is really coming down and that they're obviously considering rate cuts that would be appropriate when they reach that judgment. And we've had generally good news on inflation. Um, you know, let's look at the data. I believe inflation will continue to come down. Yeah, and I guess I'm just wondering if the economy continues to hold up. That no you what stumbled into the that. comedy channel. I think th we've funny. got a good, strong economy. We've got very strong domestic demand. Um, consumers are holding up. Some low-income consumers um, are perhaps exhausting their buffers of saving that they built up during the pandemic. We're seeing a little bit more distress at the household level there. But generally, households are in very good financial sh shape. Our financial system is generally quite strong. Um, I don't, it, it, things can always happen. There's always recession risk. Geopolitical developments could um, create risk to our economy. But I think we've got a good, strong economy that's on a solid track. And that position of strength in the U.S. And I think it's because of that commentary that uh, Morgan Wallen felt the need to throw a chair from er Eric Church's new bar. 
Country star Morgan Wallen was arrested on reckless endangerment charges after throwing a chair from the rooftop of a six-story bar in Nashville's popular Broadway district Sunday night. Wallen, 30, was booked early Monday on three counts of felony, reckless endangerment, and one count of misdemeanor disorderly conduct. He was at country singer Eric Church's new bar. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all tossed a chair from the sixth story of a new country bar. You know, show me a person who says they haven't done this, then I'll show you a liar. <laughs> what? Well, I guess that's the, that's the news of the day. The news of the day. <laughs> he was sober. Maybe. All right, what's this? What else are we missing? What else? Yeah, everyone's talking about Morgan Wallen now. Feels like every six months he has some pretty decent controversy. He likes to go in the that six month cycle. What else do we have? Everyone's just beefing. Is is the solar eclipse just causing people to go crazy? Is that what's happening right now? If the draft was today, I'm picking Caitlin Clark over Brawny. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Matt used to do the chair bit. Yeah, I would never toss it off the sixth story though. You know, I had some respect for my chair. Five minute bullish, 10 minute bullish, 30 minute bullish, five minute bullish, 10 minute bullish, 30 minute bullish. Uh, so the spy in the queues right now, I think it pays to be a bull today. I threw on a bullish position. Uh, everyone in the discord has it. Uh, we'll just see how things go today. See how the rest of the day goes. Yeah, I, I guess that's over. All the prepared remarks. Is there any other hot news? Any other hot drama you guys want my commentary on? I'm just kind of stoked to actually see it. I don't have those glasses, so I'm just going to have to go blind staring at it. Which, it, it's a risk I'm willing to take. It's a risk I'm willing to take. For sure. What else do we have? Ivy League college costs soar to more than 90000 a year. That's a pretty penny. Is there really even a point in Ivy Leagues anymore? I feel like they kind of are a laughing stock. Trump says states should set abortion limits and exceptions. Ex-president declined to call for a national ban of 15 weeks. Trump supports uh, exceptions for the R word, the I word, and the M word. So it's a state issue, I guess. Is I guess he must have pumped that up on uh, Truth Social. Man, market, I guess, is kind of grinding. Is there anything else? Uh, Diamond Hands AMC. Well, that's probably... The silliest thing to ever do. But hey. Hey, if you want to keep lining the, the pocket of Adam Aaron, go for it. Almost a new all-time low. Yeah, it looks like a phenomenal stock. Really just crushing it. Really just crushing it. Uh, options still somewhat bullish. The Right here, we're picking up. You could have played it off this hedge wall looking kind of nice. Uh, looking kind of nice. Oh, is this more of the Morgan Wallen thing? His crew just got him out. What else do we have? Popular streamer Jami 
Johnny Somali arrested by Israeli police for harassing Israeli female officers. Well, people are nuts. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. What? Why does today just feel so weird? I was kind of against it, but I think you guys are onto something. I'll admit it. I disagree with all of you when you're trying to say today is a weird day and strange things are happening. I didn't want to believe you. I'll admit it, but I was wrong. You guys were right. Today does feel like a very strange, weird day. Oh, brother. Here we are. Here we are. You guys were right. I was wrong. It does feel like structurally the bulls are being favored right now. Vomited hard on Thursday. Recovered. Put in this high low. A, B, C, D. Looking for the, I suppose, this extension move up to 5,250 on the SPX. On the SPY, that would be roughly equivalent to like, I don't know, 523. On the Q, similar situation. Would love a retrace back up to 446. Coins having a decent day. Decent day. Tesla having a decent day. Apple eh, saving itself. Triple bottom here at 168.50. Wild times. Wild, wild, wild times. All right. What else are we missing? Anything? What were the details of the Biden will announce new student loan forgiveness plan impacting tens of millions of Americans. President Joe Biden will announce today, Monday, the details of his revised student loan forgiveness plan. All right. When, 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 when is that happening anytime soon? Anytime soon. I mean, no doubt college is too expensive, but I just don't think the solution is the government forgiving that debt. Trump media stock drops more than 10% to open trading week. Trump media shares drop more than 10% in early trading. DJD's plunge followed a 12% decline in the share price on Friday. Trump media, which owns True Social app, used its biggest shareholder, former President Donald Trump, had a higher price nearly $80 two weeks ago after it began to trade publicly. That's it? They don't have their reasoning why? They're just like, hey, we want you to know that it's lower. Feels like a bit of a biased news if you ask me. Give us a reason. Let us know what's up. Let us know what's up. What else? Oil still looking good. Jamie Dimon says AI may be impactful on humanity as printing press, electricity, and computers. He was also saying that the Fed fund rate might go up to 8%. I thought they'd have the clip. I guess they don't quite yet. Uh, but wait, right. No. Is this one the one that has the clip on Jamie Dimon? JP Morgan, they are reporting after the... Uh, before the market opens this Friday. So we are starting earnings season again. Shanali Basak joins us now for more. Shanali, it could be as transformational as the steam engine for the U.S. economy. Walk Tesla's us through the logic going. from Jamie Dimon this morning. Well, there are a few things. We know that J.P. Morgan has been talking about this in their annual letter for years. We know that he has thousands of people devoted to the cause of AI. They just elevated somebody in their investment bank to play a broader role here to look at data and technology across the whole firm. When they look at artificial intelligence, they do use it in a lot of businesses already. Everything from financial advisors are figuring out how to incorporate it in a a more generative way to figure out how to dole out investment advice. Uh, remember, trading desks already use AI at scale. Now, what does generative artificial intelligence mean for the trading desks as well? Data centers, investments in data centers. So you kind of look across the entire spectrum, and certainly AI has a huge role, not to mention anti-money laundering and security concerns within a bank. If you have AI actors out there that can cause harm, as a bank, you also need to have that defense properly in place to ward those actors off. You've been reading, Jamie, diamond letters for a very long time and then covering the earnings that come out shortly thereafter what's i feel bad this is the lady that i was just being an asshole the one stream and i'd made fun of her and then she followed me the next stream so i feel like she hates me and then i did a deeper dive into her and she actually seems like a really nice human being so i am 100 percent the asshole in that case
What's the relationship between the two? So there's a few things in this letter in particular that does speak to the business moving forward. You think, for example, what he says about the expectations for True First story. Republic. Yeah, they had it's said 100% earlier me. that $500 million worth of earnings annually would be added, and now they think that's closer to $2 billion, Lisa, if you could believe it. And on top of that, too, he also draws out his concerns. We always look on Friday, this Friday coming up, on what he's going to say about the forward look for the economy, and he gives a little bit of that in the letter today, uh, a lot of concerns about persistent inflation and the idea that inflation could stay higher for longer. It's interesting. He balances that out in a very interesting way. He talks about persistent uh, inflation relative to federal spending and worries about geopolitics, but he also talks about economic growth, and not only in the vein of AI being kind of as productive as a steam engine, but also when you think about how much money economies have to spend for a green economy as well. This idea that, you know, he puts a specific statistic, 70,000 electricians needed uh, to really boost the electronification of the United States, for example. So how much productivity is needed to offset those forces, I think is a big question. We were asking earlier, is this Jamie Dimon as Treasury Secretary or is this Jamie Dimon as CEO of J.P. Morgan? You know, that's been the perennial question, hasn't it? This letter has always been kind of a swan song to the world. It has been Jamie Dimon's way of really weighing in on a lot of issues that impact J.P. Morgan and its customers, but also remember they bank clients and uh, governments around the world. There's a whole section in the back of this letter that talks about what it's like to be a good leader. And you have to wonder if that's the handoff story. Is that the note not just to uh, people who are looking at the qualities for the next CEO, but also his own little letter here to whoever his successor may be? He was a little bit kinder, and he said Trump was kind of right in Davos. Then recently he went to the White House and had lunch with Kamala Harris. What is he doing in terms of politics? Really? He's walking a fine line purposefully. He always has. And there's a part in the letter the as well where he line. says something I think we already know about how he's like a cold-blooded free market capitalist. <laughs> and it's important to remember his what is economic this camera thinking as we think about how he deals with politicians. Bloomberg. He's always straddled the line. It's really interesting to watch him go to around? Congress. Now they have that annual grilling of the bankers now. They don't ask them the same political questions they used to ask about green energy financing, for example. These things about balance has swayed one year or another, frankly, for these banks. And so he has been able to step up on things like energy financing in a way that has been unpopular at times. But guess what? A few years later, it's less unpopular, isn't it? And so you see that he kind of stands the test of time when he's fighting back on these issues. JP Morgan shares are up 17 percent, more than 17 percent so far this year. I find it fascinating what you pointed out about First Republic and how much they've gained from that. How much are we expecting them to just consolidate their gains as the, as the world's biggest bank is the U.S.'s biggest bank and really dominating a lot of areas that previously were more open maybe to some competitors. Yeah, this whole beginning of the letter starts about the history of bank mergers from J.P. Morgan to Bank of America. And this idea here that J.P. Morgan in and of itself, by 2004, J.P. Morgan represented the consolidation, he says, of four of the ten largest U.S. banks from 1990, if you can believe it. You remember that it had been born off of consolidation, but you forget exactly how much. And now when he's talking about bank rules as well. He's making the case for the whole banking system to keep consolidating, to ward off, uh, this is another favorite one that I had from this, the idea that even Apple effectively ap acts as a bank. He's talking about all the competition they're facing from the non-bank system, and he calls out one big tech player by name. One big tech player by name. Well, folks, bulls are thus far dominating in line with the call out on discord in line with the seasonality of the day and probably in line with most of our expectations given last week i do want to remind everyone that this upcoming week most likely going to be a pretty crazy one we have a cpi report a ppi report two inflation reports we have two major treasury auctions the 30 year and the 10 year and we have a slew of fed speakers and it's also the start of earnings season which will commence before the market opens this friday where we hear from the likes of jp morgan blackrock city wells fargo all that stuff so that's what i have for you for now um don't forget sign up for public they are the sponsor of today's stream it is free to download free to sign up no commissions no per contract fees and you get a rebate when you trade options it's the only brokerage i know of that does it and if you want to i guess hang out with the trading community the actual goonie community it is pinned to the top of chat it is in the description of the video and you can get your first month for completely free and the reason i do that is because i think within the first month you're gonna be like oh wow like i really like it and i don't want anyone to feel like they got got so you're able to give it a test ride for one full month like i said pinned to the top of chat in the description 
of the video. Um, and oops. I probably should have put that up. That is the official disclosure for public. Um, I don't know why it didn't come up a little bit before, but just a note. Yeah, it's a brokerage, a legitimate brokerage. So they're going to have that disclosure, but that's all in the description of the video as well. I appreciate all the good vibes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll catch you tomorrow um, for the next stream. But between now and then there's going to be the update video that comes out tonight and that will be posted on both Rumble and on YouTube. Um, so update video tonight, streaming once again tomorrow morning. That's what I have for you. I hope you make a buttload of money. Peace out.